Well, thank you for joining us. My name is Jesse Cortez, and I'm here with Annette Rippert, uh, Senior Managing Director of Accenture Technology. And we just walked out of the Women's uh, Breakfast uh, Forum and um, wanted to continue the conversation here uh, while we have her with us. So thank you for joining us, and thank you for, for sharing your time on stage with all our participants. I was so excited to be here today. Thanks. Yeah, so Accenture has been a longstanding partner of high tech, and we're really proud of the relationship that we've been able to build with them. And particularly, the Women's Forum has been super impactful. We've been able to sort of grow the presence of, of, the, of the event. We had um, almost 200 participants today. And so thanks to leaders like yourself and others that have participated and to share some of those lessons, uh, we've been able to, to really um, share this content with our participants, and they've really sort of enjoyed and taken so much value from it. So we wanted to continue the conversation. Um, you had mentioned a few things uh, in, in, the, in the breakfast this morning about um, really how you, uh, the three major key components that have really helped you build your career. And you talked about building your base um, of knowledge and a, a way of being able to sort of challenge yourself to progress technically, become an expert. You also mentioned finding your passion. And then the third thing you mentioned was building an authentic uh, a network, uh, one like high tech, right, that can do wonders for, for folks. But I wanted to key in on something. Uh, you mentioned that um, to be known as an expert was an important uh, component to the path. You also had shared later in the conversation too that uh, one thing that you learned as you, as you um, uh, moved into other leadership roles is that sometimes that feeling of being an expert kind of hindered your ability to sometimes ask for help. Share more about maybe how you were able to sort of balance the two and, uh, and how what others can sort of draw from, from that. Sure. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. And this morning's event was incredible. I couldn't believe how many people were in the room. And it's very clear that that room has fostered an authentic network. I saw people who were friends who'd been coming to your events over a period of time who really created a sense of friendship amongst each other, that will be very important to their progression. Because as I talked about having that network, an authentic network, which means you have a sense of trust. It's not a network for the purposes of you know, salesmanship, what have you. It's a network of trust and being able to try ideas on others, et cetera. It's so important. So thank you for the role that you're playing in that by providing and fostering that kind of capability for all the people who are here. So, you know, the conversation that we had, I think that build, you called it building the base. But I think it's so important that as we come to our careers, we come with something we have a great deal of interest, self-confidence in. You know, we, are, we must all today in the area of technology be continuous learners. So, you know, it does take an investment of time to continue to be at the precipice of what's changing and why it's important and taking the time to immerse yourself in that. So it's important to be an expert, but it provides a residual value. It gives you a, self, a, a sense of self-confidence, a place from which to have the basis of your career be built around. And I talked about how, you know, if you have picked the wrong one, that's a problem because work becomes work then. And if you've yeah. picked the right area of interest, it's actually something that that curiosity comes to you naturally, that you want to learn. And so it's a, you know, a virtuous cycle, really. Right. But one of the things that you mentioned that, we, that I talked a little bit about is that um, building support for your ideas, when you want to bring something forward that's new. Um, on the one hand, you, you must have a unique idea that you're proud about, that you want to have a sense of ownership about, that you want to, in essence, maybe have be seen as your idea to have credit for. But one of the things I learned early on was the fact that if you kept that to yourself and developed it and, you know, because you were afraid someone else might take credit, didn't share it, that in essence, you know, you've, you've created a jeopardy for your own idea. And that in fact, it's so much more important that you're creating, getting feedback, creating support from others bringing others on the journey, people who will be either impacted or necessary to your success or an approver of that idea along with you as you develop it, because ultimately then your idea becomes the success of some, a group that's much more broad. Others are invested in helping you make it successful. And so I think that this dichotomy maybe of wanting to be an expert, of owning your thing, 
of, you know, wanting to protect that and, and have it be seen as your individual art work of art becomes at risk at some point that it's really imperative that you're building that, uh, that bigger base of support. And so um, I, I thought it was an interesting question because ultimately the questions that came back from the group, you know, were, were ones that allowed you to see, you know, well, I, I can understand why it's necessary. Right. And I, I think, it, you know, the other portion of this too that may be really important is being able to sort of find your voice, right? But in, in an organization where inclusion is front and center, like it is at Accenture, like it is at many of the companies that are here, being able to foster an environment that allows you to sort of bring your whole self to work and to find your voice, ultimately that's what we want, right? We want those ideas to flow. We want the, those ideas to take, to take uh, shape and action and to create value. And, and I imagine with a company like Accenture and the work that the critical work that you do with your clients, it's, it's, it's probably the most important thing that, that can possibly happen. So we invest in inclusion and diversity because I believe it's a business imperative. And why do I say that? Because the more unique perspectives and thoughts that reflect the nature of our society, the nature of the business environment that we're in, that diversity of opinions and people at the table provides a much better outcome, a much more innovative outcome. And we've done studies to prove this. So when I think about the importance of inclusion and diversity, it's not a social agenda, it's a business imperative agenda to the outcome that we're seeking economically in the market as well, right? right? So it too is a virtuous action, right? right? Because it brings benefits in multiple dimensions. No, that's right. I'm gonna pivot a little bit, um, kind of along those lines. Uh, certainly we were in the women's uh, forum this morning and we talked about uh, uh, maybe young, young ladies sort of self-selecting out at, at various stages, right, of education. Um, tell me more about uh, your role that you play um, and, and really how we all can contribute to make a difference um, in, in, in that space. Well, I, as we talked a little bit about, it's so important that we're able to grow a diverse workforce. But a diverse workforce comes from a diverse educated force, comes from a diverse set of people interested in the technology disciplines. And one of our studies, what we found was we were losing the interest of young women at the junior high school level, a formative time of you know, social interaction, of intellectual development, of choices that'll continue forward into high school. And uh, what we saw were women falling, young girls, falling out of the technology-oriented classes because they didn't see female teachers, they didn't see their girlfriends, their social network in that classroom. And so it's become apparent that now we all must do something in order to foster an interest, whether it happens to be by gender, by diversity, by socioeconomic background of individuals who, you know, find role models, who find friends, who find interesting content that all the examples are not about, you know, football statistics right. in, uh, in a math class, right? Um, and so I think that that is important not only for educators, but it becomes important for all of us as parents, as those concerned about our future generations, to be doing what we can to bring role models, excitement, fostering that kind of diversity into our community schools, into our children's schools, into the social groups that they participate in. You know, so I'll be leading a panel later this afternoon with uh, a number of our scholars. So High Tech also has formed the High Tech Foundation and is now providing scholarships for, um, for young men and women um, of Hispanic descent. And so we wanted to get them to tell their story, right? So that people know that you know, the, the, even a small action, right, or a small contribution is making a difference. They're not just numbers. They're about uh, affecting the lives of, 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 uh, of these, these bright, this bright future, right, uh, of yes. talent. And one thing that resonated with me, uh, so first generation that was born here in the U.S., first to go to college, first to get an MBA, and I was sort of a long line of firsts in my family. And so their stories really resonated with me because I, I found myself sort of reflecting back on, on, this, this notion of sometimes you don't have all the self-confidence at times to sort of push through, right? Yes. And, and they said the same thing, but now that they've been exposed to executives here or others, other leaders here at, at high tech, they see that there's, 
somebody that looks like me, somebody that sounds like me, that I can maybe do this technology type of role, wherever that may be, whether it's in digital or analytics or whatever it may be along that sort of STEM, um, STEM discipline, that they see examples, right, to sort of persevere. Who was somebody that, that you looked to, to say, you know, when in doubt, I always have sort of this North Star or somebody that continued to sort of motivate me? Yeah, and that varied in different times in my life. Um, but I, uh, I, had, I had gone to uh, grade school in sort of a middle class neighborhood, maybe lower middle class neighborhood. In my grade school, there had been an astronaut who attended that grade school, whose picture was on the wall. And, you know, this was a time um, of great interest around our space program, et cetera. His name was Eugene Cernan. And I thought, oh, my aspiration is to learn enough about it. When I thought about NASA, I thought a little of science, but mostly math. I really want to emulate. I'm like, look, he lived here and he could do that. I could do that. And I can remember that I was in the younger grades of my primary school. I'm talking kindergarten, first grade, second grade. I was so inspired by the fact that somebody could rise to greatness from having an ordinary beginning. Right. I don't know that much about his background, but that's how I felt. And so that was an inspiration to me. And certainly as I moved into my professional career, uh, I did have the opportunity, they weren't always women, um, but I saw other individuals who I understood they didn't ha have to be exceptional. I can think of one individual who was a mentor of mine for many a year. And what he taught me was the importance of setting a goal. And then, you know, you get busy doing the work of the day. You get busy doing the work of the day. What are you doing to look back at the end of each week, at the end of each month, on what you're doing to achieve that important thing that you set forth? And that made such a big difference uh, in the way that I thought about what sat on my to-do list, how I prioritized that to-do list, to keep in perspective the grind of every day versus the longer term plan. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, that makes sense. Well, I have one final question for you, if we may. Um, I heard you say my best career advice for women is invest in your future self. So what else would you share about maybe um, ways that people can sort of invest in themselves? Specifically, maybe um, let's, since we just walked out of the, the women's uh, forum, maybe specifically for Hispanic women, how can they invest, continue to invest in themselves? Well, the first thing that I always talk about from an investment is know your passion and your skill area. What's the thing that people want to, you want people to know about you and invest in that? And because we're talking about women in technology, I mean, that is picking some dimension that you want to be vested in. It doesn't mean having to be the hands-on keyboard deep coder expert. It means understanding what's happening in your area of interest and how it pertains to the kind of challenges that you're trying to solve. The second thing, uh, that I think is so important is that you have to find, particularly for Hispanic women, a way to build your own personal brand. So part of that education, choosing your direction is part of that brand, right? But more importantly, decide what is it? If I had 30 seconds with somebody very important and I wanted to tell them about me, what would I tell them? Right. Being prepared with that story. Uh, rehearse that story. When you think about your amplification, in social media or your annual uh, summary of your work or in the way that you propose yourself to your next role in a company. Be authentic to that personal brand you're developing. Adjust it over time. I would tell you that my career uh, never took any of the twists and turns that I planned for it. So take what comes at you and make something of it, but keep coming back to that point of know your personal brand rehearse that personal brand so when you have that one moment, that one opportunity, you can say to someone else, this is who I am and what I've accomplished and what I am hoping to do next. Like, don't be flat-footed on that. Be prepared with it. So I think that can be maybe perhaps the most important point of all. Yeah, sound advice. Well, thank you very much for your time. It was a pleasure Thanks. getting to, to, to get to know you even better and, uh, and for participating here thank at the High Tech Summer. Thank you for the opportunity event. today. Thank Appreciate you. It.